Hopefully, Peter's yeah. charisma and and uh, Anne's intelligence intelligence will keep you here until uh, till the end. It's only one of those one of those two anyway. What, one of them. Is Sorry. One of them is true. Yeah. So uh, here we are on another Wednesday webinar case study. Uh, thank you for joining us. Now I know um, where to see how and who you are. Um, holding uh, fort as usual is uh, Peter De Villiers, my co-founder and me, and we are joined by the inestimable, the amazing, the awesome Anne Flynn, all the way from Cincinnati, Ohio. It's in, is that right? That's right. This is Cincinnati, Ohio, yeah. Um, I've known Anne, I, 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 I tried to go back to the beginning of, we don't um, talk in Facebook Messenger anymore, um, but that's where our the relationship and connection started. And I attempted to go back to the beginning of, of that and I I gave up after about <laughs> 50 I think scrolls. It was the end of 2016 when I first um, talked to you on Facebook Messenger. That's right, yeah, 2016. And um, so we go back online that far. We've we've uh, we've met up, we've been at conferences, and, and um, I regard Anne as a friend, not just a uh, colleague and and sort of fellow um, journeyman on this. Um, Just <laughs> no, the, the, you know the, the, the problem with speaking <laughs> if you need is to know you, is, yeah. is that you so often well I do anyway you start a sentence and the beginning of the sentence sounds so great <laughs> you get halfway through it and you just say oh, oh, you're the one that's supposed anyway, to be good at this anyway, I, love, I, I love Anne I love Anne as a friend as a colleague as a um, um, you know, fellow uh, automation whiz, whatever. She's she's a fantastic human being, and it's a privilege. Uh, you guys have the privilege of her being on the webinar today because not only is she, um, you know, fabulous with Infusionsoft and all things automation, she is also amazing with printing and crafts and sewing and uh, and all things creative like that. And she has a printing business, which I'm sure she will tell us about as we go. And it's that business which we are going to talk about and model and create a Macanta system for. Um, so is there anything that I, that I haven't said about you that you'd like to share? Or shall we just um, say, Tally ho, and on we go. Peter. I think we're good to go. And has a nasty habit of eating ice all day long. I do. There you go. I don't drink alcohol, but I eat ice. So. <laughs> There's my contribution. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So if you want to, before we jump in, um, just for everyone's benefit, um, tell us a bit about your business and what it is you're trying to do with the company. Okay, so um, the business has a number of different types of printing involved. So we do wide format printing as well as dye sublimation printing. And um, in addition to that, um, my niece and I have gone into business selling specific designs. So with the wide format and the dye sublimation, it's largely doing jobs that are custom to what the customer wants. But she and I have started a kind of line of sewing and fiber arts related products. And so I wanna keep track of those designs as well as the variables which are different for wide format and dye sublimation. Okay. So Is that enough detail? Yeah, yeah, I think for now. So um, we had a chat beforehand and you sent us over a sheet with all the different details. Um, and how we've decided this will work is that we will have three, and anything I say that isn't clear to anyone watching will become clear as we go on. But just as an overview, we'll have three data object types um, which will have the actual design, we'll have the die sublimation, you can say it now, and the wide format. Those will be our um, three data object types, but then the 
designs will be reference data for the other two data objects so that when you look at a particular wide format job you can clearly see which design relates to it and when you go and look at said design then you can see all the details um, and the like so um, we'll build it in that form and we'll start with the design i'll start sharing my screen in a moment um, just you've got on the sheet um, we've obviously got collections but will do you want the data object type to be called collections or designs um because then, then you've got the two collections, which is so and so, and now and later, which we said. Oh, right. So, are we calling? Are we calling designs, the data? I think would be. I think designs would be the best. Okay, but that can then only cover cover either so and so or now and later, rather than both. Oh, I see. So, should it be so and so designs and now and later designs? I would rather have it designs dash so and so and designs dash now and later. There we go. So we'll start with that and we'll do that. So but bearing in mind that everyone knows I know fuck all about fuck all. Um, but could it be whether it's so and so or now and later be a field inside designs or do you need it for something no, else? No, because the because the, the the detail elements for so and so are different to the detail elements of now and later. Yep. That makes sense. So I shall share my screen and you can tell me when it's all working and then we'll go. That was much sharper than last week. Yeah, if you can comment in the chat and you can see the screen showing the counter and that it's nice and clear, then um, we can go from there. It looks good. Yeah. to me all right so uh, we'll go i've already logged in but we'll go and build our data objects first so first one we need to build is the design because that's going to be referenced on the others so we need that to be available so if we go under admin under connector uh, just click on click on the high um of that box at the bottom just so it's not there the whole in the whole there you go so you want it to be um and on your sheet so and so is all lowercase is that how you want it yep yeah so so and so is it is that all right yep yeah that's good um, i've already made a mistake so it'll come out of here Relationships. Which relationships can I have to designs? Designer or customer? Um, okay. And for the um, other data objects, what what? Um, for the wide format and the die sub, what relationships can I have there? Oh. I would think um, at this point, just customer would be the only okay. relationship. I can't think of any other. Yeah. So now we can head over to the connector because we've got our relationships and we can go and add and we said so and so designs and now we've got the option here to say yep yeah, they can be a designer and they can be a customer and what's happening here where am I clicking? can I have more than one designer and or customer for um, you can have more than one customer. Each design would only have one designer. Okay, go with that. So then we start on our fields, and we go here. Designer is a relationship, so we won't have that. In case I have someone else designing something, it'll still be a relationship in that side. In that case, um, 
And do you want the choose one and we'll be adding to this list? Is that an instruction for me or is that what you want on the for, interface? For you. Okay. So we'll just go with design name. Yeah. Okay, so design name. And do you want the colon to be in there? No, it doesn't need to be. Okay. Because otherwise I need to remember to put it in every field. So. Um, design name. Um, Peter, turn, turn your video off. Your, your screen keeps going um, fuzzy. Okay. Um, let me see how I do it that. looks okay to me, Pete, just so you know. Yeah. There you go. Camera's off. It's going to be, it's only one design at a time, so we'll go for a Dropbox. And let me see this. Okay, yeah. So we've got those ones there. Default value, there is no default. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then now is it it's the design name that we're going to reference on the other data yeah. object. Yeah. Right. So, so this one is a data reference. We'll use it as a list header because we want to be at the top. And for the moment, I'll stop there. I won't add any sections or anything until we've got all the fields in and we can see how the layout looks. All right. So we'll go next field. And then we have topic. And here we can choose all appropriate. So for that, we'll use a checkbox. And we don't need that as data reference, but we'll put it in the top as well. Okay. And that's actually it for the design. Yep. <clears throat> Did you want, is, so there's no other information that at this stage you need to record on a design. Not, you, not that I could think of, no. Because you can attach an actual PDF of the design to the right. data object. That's de that's partially why I wanted it to be a data object. Mm. Okay, so we've got that. I'll refresh. Video has not made any difference, Peter. If you want to turn it back on. Okay. Um, in the comments, is it fuzzy for anyone else, or is this just Pete? It's not fuzzy all the time like it was last week. But it just yeah. might just be when I load stuff. So you've just got at the moment design name and topic. Okay. Okay. Um, so we can make it the layout a bit nicer. Um, we work on the basis that at some point you might add additional fields. Um, so I'm going to go here um, in the subsection. Just give me a second. Can I just ask something? Mm. Um, are you sure the design name is a drop down and that um, what what Anne has given you is actually the first, actually, how, how many were on their list? Those are the first 10 data objects. Because you're not going to have another data object that's going to have the same design name as another one. Um, you can have more than one. I, I, I should let Anne explain. Um, but the design is the Grim Ripper. Am I right. right? Correct. And then the topic is like who it applies to. Yeah. The Grim Ripper would be selling or quilting. Yeah. So it can be used for those different things. But any given product would only have. The Grim Ripper, not not double, not two yeah. designs. Yeah. So for you, these designs, it's a bit like building up an inventory. Right. Of it. Um, 
But am I right in thinking you could have a Grim Ripper for different to be on cups or to be on something else? And therefore, you would have different designs, all with the name Grim Ripper, but the details will be different. The details as in like the product that it was used on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And is, are the details of the product it was used on in the other data object and not in the designs data object? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Are you gonna ever gonna have more than one data object called Grim Ripper? Nope. So that means in order to create another data object with a different uh, title, you're gonna have to go in, edit the edit the drop down to add the name, and then you can go in and create the name on the data object. That's what doesn't seem to make sense to me. Yeah. So changing that to a text field means you only do it once when you create those designs, and then you're done. Yeah. So that list that she gave you on the spreadsheet or on the on the document. Yeah. Are, are the however many specific data objects or which do you prefer? Huh? I don't understand the difference. I don't understand what Pete just said or what you said yeah. about the text field. Yeah. So what what Pete is saying is if I if you want to add another item to this list, so uh -huh. life's a stitch. Let's say we add something else to that list mm -hmm. because we've got these as drop this is a drop down if you now want to add that as a data object you have to go and create change that drop down field in order to select it rather right. than that being a text field and when you create the item of connected data you type in what it is which works fine providing you have no intention of having more than one if you're going to have more than one called grim ripper then there needs to be something behind it that stipulates that that's what it is. No, I just thought a drop down would be easier. Like if I'm gonna go to my wide format and put in a, a, pro, a job, then I would choose from the list that was- That's the data reference. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's gonna be on the reference field. So if you're just talking about when I add a new one. Yeah. yeah. So now then I'm whichever fine. way you think is easier is, is fine with me. Yeah. yeah. In that instance, this should be a text field. That's fine. And we've actually got eight, yeah, the first eight design data objects. Yeah. Which we'll create in a little while. So that's the design data object really finished. Um, so we'll move back to the top of our page. And this one is just called, the heading here is wide format. Is that what you want the data object type to be? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. And again, I can be designer and customer or just customer? Just customer, really. That's fine. Are they wide format jobs? Is that a better description? That's fine. Yeah. The, the data object type title is usually best in the uh, plural. The, yeah, that's Just, fine. Okay, so item, we then do want to drop down. And in this instance, your ABC is just because that's the way Google Docs did yeah, it. Exactly. And uh, self adhesive is yes, no. Ah, you got a conditional field value in there. That'll come, that'll come. Yeah. Um, a radio button, yes, no, or drop down, yes, no. Whichever way you want it, I don't care. <laughs> <It's your> way. <laughs> What's that? It's your interface. It's your business. I don't know which is better down the road. I don't care. Okay, there you go. Uh, Radio button is awesome. If yes, permanent or removable. And then, so it's self-adhesive or a link. Is that right? Are those my options? 
No. Self-adhesive is yes or no. If it's yes, then we want to ask another question. Is it permanent or removable? And yeah. then a link, I want a field to put in the, um, the link to the uh, material. Uh, so link is not an option under the material. It is under material. As a section, but it's not an option like banner or decal or HTV is an option. No, I guess not. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So we first have, is it self-adhesive? Then if yes, removable. And we'll have another radio button because you don't care. Oh no. <laughs> um, that's a select because that's. Oh, now you're changing it from a radio button. I have only this one, permanent or removable. That's why I wanted to let you decide, because every time I do it one way, you say, oh, no, it's better if it's the other way. <laughs> That's just because he's an asshole. That's what <laughs> uh, Self-proclaimed, it must be said. Yes, uh, I can't agree. So we've got removable, and then, our op then it's just a field called, what is this a link to? It's a link. It will be a link for my reference to the distributor's website. Like where I got the material. Okay, so material link. That'll be a URL. Okay, then printer profile. <laughs> Tell me what that does. That is when I'm getting ready to print the job, I choose one of those. And if I'm going to reproduce the job later, I want to be sure I use the same um, profile in the software that prints it because it makes okay. the colors look different. Yeah. And do you understand what I said about default? I do indeed. All right. And then comments is just a text box. Yep. And then we need one more field, which we called design name. We've uh, skipped over the helper text a few times there, and we've got a really cool enhancement coming for that. I don't know if you're um, familiar with markdown formatting. Have you come across that before? I, I know the name. I don't yeah. totally understand well, it, it. It allows you to um, express the express the formatting of uh, a text document, basically. So in English, where, that means you can have bold and italic and uh, yeah, the like. Yeah. On, on, on Slack, you might see you do star, star, and then a word, and then star, star. Right. That's markdown. Yeah. So we're going to have markdown formatting in helper text, which then displays as a little icon on the interface. Oh, cool. And you just click on, it, click on it, and it pops up um, really neatly formatted um, helper text. So, sorry. So we set up the design as a reference data. So now mm -hmm. when I come to field type, I've got here so-and-so designs. Okay. Design but, then, what if it's not one of those designs? What if it's a custom job for someone? Um, then I this, would. This is why Peter does these builds. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I, I would, in that instance, I would make sure that there is an op because you only want to indicate that it's a custom design or do you want to be able to save that custom design as a data object or do you just want to clarify that this is not one of our stock designs correct i just want to clarify that yeah. so then what i'd say is when you come to create all your designs have one that is custom okay and um, so that you can select from that list it's a custom design and then okay. you can attach it and because then you know not to go and look at the designs for the attachment, the attachment right. will be on the job. Okay. 
Okay. So if we then So just, where we have so and so now and later, then there will also be custom. Um, no, not saying? quite. Where you have um, Grim Ripper, Stitch Witch, Slasher, ah. Shear, you'll also have custom. Okay. Okay. So we'll have that. And if we then just have a look, um, do we, which of these fields do we want in the header when it comes to the interface? The item? Yes, we've said. Um, I think, um, let's see, the, the item. Yeah. And. Um, I think the material link. Yeah, material link and then the design name. Yeah. Who's doing the tapping? Oh, I am, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Class is in session, be quiet. <laughs> okay, so I'll I was never good at that. <laughs> Um, so that's all okay, and I can then refresh that, and that'll appear on the left-hand side. Nice. Very good. So you'll have that, and let's sort out some of these. Um, so... For my money, I would put item self-adhesive, if yes, and material link in one column, and then printer profile, comments, and design name in the other column. I'm good with that. Okay. And what do you want these columns called? Okay, so you had said, which three things did you say in the first column? Item what adhesive. Things? If yes, and material link. Okay. I would say um, product information. Okay. And then in the other column, I would say product details. Okay. Man. I don't know That's why, but it's, it's suddenly amusing to me that the, the old floppy drive is still the symbol for saving something. <laughs> I, I've been thinking that recently because who under the age of, I don't know, 30 maybe knows what that is. Yeah. So there you go. So there's your sections now. Very nice. Uh, we've got those. And the design name you'll see when we come to it in a bit at the moment there will be no options there because the list there grows based on the objects you create here right okay mm -hmm. but we'll come on to that so then we've got our last data object which is the die sub right and are we going to call that die sub jobs or do you want to spell sure. out the whole word? No, that's, that's totally fine. That's great because I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have die sub jobs. Again, I can be the customer and we'll go add fields. First field, substrate name. Yep. Or maybe instead of name, it should say type. Okay. And is that, that's not a drop down. It can be pretty much anything, and therefore you just type it in. 
Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, I struggle with that because there's just a kajillion of different ones. So. Um, substrate item number. Yep. And um, is that a text field or an or is it a proper number? Text um, field. I... Text field would be better. Um, link is a link to the product, the substrate. So is that a material link again, or substrate? Yeah. Link? Material link is fine. That's fine. Then SPM setting. I can only choose one. Right, that's similar to the um, printer profile in wide format. Finishing. Um, explain to me here. Options A is heat press. Right. So I do, I do wanted to say heat press, even though heat press is one of the options. So with die sub, you you print it and then you have to finish it, and you use one of those three machines to finish it. Um, but heat press is the best. So the heat press, the time, and the temperature are the three variables I need under finishing. Okay, and heat press, mug press, or conven convection oven is the means by which you apply the finishing? The heat, yeah. The heat. So um, would it be finishing type? No. No, you want the field to be called heat press? Yeah. Okay. So finishing isn't going to be a field. It's in the finishing section. Correct. The field is heat press. Right. Okay. See, we're all learning about printing on mugs. <laughs> it's cool, though, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the really cool things about that's the what, that's the best. And so it's one of the cool things about what we do is that we, you know, I, I'm just innately curious about the way people make money and earn, earn a living and do things that interest them. Just finding out all about these different businesses is fascinating. So what time is typically like a number of seconds. So a number field is fine. Okay. Whole number. Yep. See, I, I, I was immediately thinking minutes or hours. I wasn't thinking in seconds at all. Well, frequently, sometimes it is number of minutes plus seconds, but most of the time it's a number of seconds. So would you, in that case, would you put in the placeholder text time in seconds or? I would, yeah. yeah okay. um, so for the temperature, how accurate do you need to be? Do you need decimals? No, whole number is fine. Okay. That is fine. And you want a time to be time in seconds. Those people. Um, custom or collection? This is, um, we might not need that because this we're. Refer to the design again. Exactly. Yeah, okay, so that's going to be, this is where we have our reference field again. Right, right. Uh, we just called it design, didn't we? Design name, I think we said. Yeah. And again, we're going to reference those designs there. Um, so now we decide which ones do you want in the header? Let's see. Um, substrate type and material link. Okay. Any of the others? 
No. No. Nah. Well, maybe design name. Yeah. So now we have that on the side as well. Nice. So I'd say the next thing we do, just to make this clear, the next uh, we just need to go and look at that design, the layout, and see what we want where. Um, I think similarly, I think the first three would be product info, and then product details would be the others. Mm -hmm. And you know what I didn't include there was comments, but I probably should have that as well. Okay. And is that going to be under the product info or product details? Details, really. Yeah, where did we put it before? It's under details. Yeah. So first three is product information. What kind of dog is that? A whiny one. <laughs> <laughs> when he was a puppy, we, we wanted to name him Crybaby, and my daughter thought that was mean. So his name is Rex, but all he does is cry. He's <laughs> a mix, but he just heard Mike come home, and he wants to see him. So. Okay, so... comments already more than likely not <laughs> no that's so smart you're on top of it i was distracted by the wino yeah me too um, where do you want the comments to be under the in the uh, in wide format we have it just above design name. Okay. So, so far this has taken us thirty one minutes. Sorry, do we want me to be quicker? Well, I'm just commenting on how how quickly you can create. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Perfect custom interface for your business. And um, this is product details. Yep. All right, so if we now refresh. I'm going to let him upstairs. I'll be right back. Okay. So we have our design, which is fairly simple. Wide format. And... I sub with comments added. Okay, so next thing we need to do is add your designs in so that we can have them as options on the jobs. Okay. Okay. So who who who's going to have the relationship of design for these designs? My niece. Is she in the system or not? Nope. Okay. Um, shall we add her? Sure. Rebecca. Okay. Yeah. Chapman. C H A P M A N. Okay. Yep. And. I don't know her email off the top, so just put like Rebecca at Gmail and I'll fix it. Something like that. That will do for now. 
Sorry about that. That will take us to our record. So your designs and the design name, mm -hmm. we've got all of these. And mm -hmm. then you, you can tell me for each of those which of the bottom bit is relevant, yeah? Okay. So let's go and add those. Add a new design, put in the name and sewing and quilting. Okay, and he's the designer. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. <laughs> this is beyond awesome now. I like every, time I, every time I see this, I never fail to think, my God, this is just. There we go, Stitch Week. Yep. That'll be knitting and crochet. I should have known. I don't see why you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Slasher. Slasher could be sewing and quilting. Yeah, that could be any of them, really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all, all of them. That that one could be all of them. I can't wait to see that design. Yeah, I don't want to know what these designs are. I mean, the first three are fairly violent. <laughs> um, are these three individuals, or is it live yes. stitch? No, they're... Okay. And they are and only... The first one could be sewing or, or quilting. Oh, I see. Because it has a sewing machine. I don't normally get to talk to you guys about sewing. This is fun. <laughs> or printing that much either, but. Or using protection for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this just knitting. What'd you say? Is the knitting one just for knitting? Correct. See, I'm learning, I'm, I'm picking it up. I know you're very clever. I could read as well. Crochet, just crochet. Yes. Two out of two. And then we said we wanted a custom. And a Can custom use protection. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Just looking at that. Um, Peter, when you're just thinking about enhancements, it'd be cool if Macanto remembered the relationship that you created the last time. Would that help, do you think? In some scenarios, yes. In other scenarios, if I have to keep telling it, no, I don't want the one you remember. Peter, yeah. I don't think custom would have any of the topics. Okay. Because custom might be, I'm making a banner for you guys to use at a show or something. Not in the next few months. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now to see the, the outcome of all of that. If we now go and create ourselves a... Drum roll. I know, I can't wait. We go and create a wide format job. Uh-huh. And let's say you're going to create a wide format job for us. Okay. Here we go to my record.
my former jobs, add a new one. We're going to say it's a banner. Is a banner self adhesive? Nope. No. Not generally. <laughs> Material link will go there for the moment. Maybe. Something here. And now here we've got all our options of all the items we've just added. Right. So every time you add a new data object as a design, mm -hmm. it'll be added to this list automatically as an option. That's perfect. So this will be custom in this instance. I'm going to be the customer. Uh, you notice how, notice how designer wasn't available there because you, you, we said there was only one right. designer possible. Right. Yeah. And that relationship already taken. Yep. No, no, that's not why. It's because for the job, the designer isn't on there. Right. For wide yeah. format. The only relationship available for a wide format job is customer. Right. Yeah, no. Because the design is linked to the design, not to this one here. Just making sure you're both awake. <laughs> um, this drives me mad, and I wish it wasn't this way. Uh, yes. I'll never remember that it's that way. So never there we go. There's the job, and you can see which design it is from, so that if you do need to go, but now you'll see when you're when you're connected to me, then I have no designs in this instance. Right, right. Because because it's a custom job, you're going to attach the design mm -hmm. straight to the job itself. That's awesome. Um. So yeah, so that's that's what you have there. That's great. Does the, does the job go through stages? Do you, do you need to keep track of where it is? Well, in either the sale or the or the fulfillment of it. If I get once I'm busier, yes, that would be the case. At this point, I'm not busy enough to have thought through that part of the process. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, that would be. But that's the great thing about Macanter is just that as your business evolves and you, you you need to be keeping track of more stuff and for more stuff to be automated, then Macanter just evolves with you. You just yeah. add, right. add more stuff. Peter, do you want to talk about what we talked about doing next week? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, so um, from memory, and you can correct me, I'm wrong, but a lot of these, the non-custom ones, some of these things, you sell on a Shopify store online. Correct. Yep. So what we are looking to do in a part two of this is actually integrate Shopify into here so that you can have these jobs appear when people place orders online. And will that be for white <laughs> or as well as die sub or not? Right now, it's mostly dice of on on Shopify. Yeah, yeah. So what what will happen? Just as a preview, what will happen is when an order is placed on Shopify, then the relevant It'll pre populate that the relevant items here will be pre populated and created. If the contact who orders from Shopify isn't in your Macanta yet, they'll be created and then attached to the data object that we're creating for them. And then, of course, you've got the option to run whatever automation you want off the back of that. Right. Um, yeah, and by next week, then the email will be ready as well. It will indeed. And no, I'm not going to show anyone. I know Pete's like, oh, come on, show them. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're much more restrained than he is. Really? Why would you think that? <laughs> it's just something I've come to learn in the recent in the recent time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, in slow obviously. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this looks great. Yeah. So um play around with us, put some mock jobs in and everything and see if there's anything we missed, because then when we come back next week, we can add a few bits in if that needed. And then we can do the integration with Shopify 
because then you can have, um, because I imagine once you're finished making what I've ordered, you go and tell Shopify that it's done and that it has shipped. Right. So that Shopify knows it's shipped and notifies the client, anything like that. So it would be ideal and we need to look at what we can do with Shopify on that. Um, is to at that point come and tell Macanta as well this one has shipped so you can in that instance we can add a status which is new order in production shipped right and and, and have that and we can we can because we can have a separate section here which we can then add in the order number which I think will be the best way to tie it back to Shopify so that we know so you, we you an update are you thinking there, Peter, about possibly getting Macanta to um, to update Shopify um, to change the status in Macanta to then for then that to change Shop Shopify as well? No, my thinking is the other way around. Just because there's, there's when when you're in inside Shopify and you've got your list of orders, it's quite easy to just go, yeah, that one is shipped, this one is shipped, that one is shipped. And the shipping details and all of that but we can see you can do it either way depending on what the integration allows to go to Macanta and say well actually and um, this one is shipped that one is shipped so that gets on to if we have those stages we can then set up a Macanta query so that you can update the orders with inline editing rather than having to go into every contact when you go and update it yeah so. so before so before next week, because I um, I don't think we were we had a chance to show off the Macanta query builder last week no. uh, with William, did we? No. So it'd be really good, Anne, if before next week, now that we've got a, a firm called kind of part two of this, um, to to get a you know a good half dozen or so jobs in there with different kind of designs and 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 whatever, then we can um, build, 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 okay. build some Macanta queries there and show that. Yeah. Okay. I can do oh. that. Man, that's like that. That's how, how much of your. Um, I mean, you you know what use you're going to make um, of this. How much would you say of what you're going to be using it for on a day to day basis? We've done in the last 40, 40 minutes or so. I would think probably eighty percent. Eighty percent. Yeah. Cool. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, just under an hour, and your shenanigans at the start. You did, he didn't sing, Anne. He came on with all these promises. I know. I'm still waiting for the end of the like haiku or the whatever limerick. he was starting at the beginning. <laughs> limerick, yes. <laughs> yes. I'll start. I, I promise that I. Oh, no, Pete. Here's, I here's the challenge for you, right? So I, I do all the build, right? What you need to do is you need to come up before every webinar with a haiku on the business that we're doing it for. A haiku or a limerick? Or a limerick, either one. No, no, I'll go okay. for a limerick now. Go for a haiku. A haiku, <laughs> okay. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> to be delivered with passion at the start of every webinar. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Next week will be my haiku. Yes, we'll start there. Oh. Okay, well, you know. Um, Do we have any questions? Anyone, anyone, any, anyone would think that uh, Peter had done this before from uh, going through that. I know. Um, but, I, but I really hope that whether you're watching live or whether you're watching a replay, um, because that's ultimately – one of the main reasons we're doing this is to just showcase what Macanta is capable of in in um, relatively short space of time. Um, that it 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 doesn't require you to have done the hundreds of implementations that Peter has done to get the results. We've taken Peter's efforts with all the implementations he's done over the last couple of years to make Macanta usable out of the box to build, as Anne said, 80% of an interface for her business in less than an hour. It might take a little bit more than an hour the first, you know, when, when you're at it because you don't know exactly where um, the, the, the buttons are and whatever and Peter's scrolling up and down. Um, but in a re relatively short period of time, if you know your business 
and you can describe your business, you can tell McCandra about your business and get a get a custom interface without the risk and cost and time of, of custom development. And then and that, that's even before we put the automation in place. So, I, I, um, and, and I would suggest don't do the hundreds of implementations that I've done because you start seeing your wife and children as data objects and <laughs> <laughs> The world just starts looking differently. <laughs> See, so Sophie is reference data for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> and different relationships. And, <laughs> so, but yeah. Cool. So, uh, joking aside, is there any questions from um, anyone uh, on the call? Let's do the, uh, the stalwarts. Jan's had coffee and walnut cake. Nicolette's gone off to have some wine. Um, Jan reckons you've got a rabbit. You do have it. Do you still have the rabbit? Yeah. Has it chewed through more of your broadband cable? Not allowed in the house. Ah, rabbit outside. You have a rabbit? Yeah. yeah. Soon, soon to be in the pot. 